Hey, everybody, and welcome to a very special episode of Blossom. <laughs> no, hey, my name is Scott Kelby. Uh, joining me here is Mr. Matt Kluskowski. Hello, everybody. It's and been I'm, a while. Yeah, it's been a while. You've been on the road. Yeah. You've been a traveling man. And also joining us are very, very special in-studio guests, one of our favorite guys on the planet, brilliant photographer, just a really cool guy, Mr. Peter Hurley. Thanks for having me, guys. Hey, dude, I'm back. Are you ready for some questions? Nice Today is ask anything to Peter. I am. I'm. I'm. I'm excited about that. You used to make me do all those blind critiques. We're looking at deer photos and stuff. So, you <laughs> 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 right. always say the expression's not right. <laughs> so we are <laughs> change that. <laughs> we we are taking your questions live on the air today. So anything you want to ask Peter, and this is including his gross adjusted income. Uh, Boxers or briefs, anything like Are that. Are you a man? <laughs> but hey, can I can I ask the first question just to get us going? Sure, let's, All right. sure. And you guys, you know, just type in your questions. Uh, oh, before we do this though, I, before I ask the first question, uh, Brad, Braddy, Brad's in the What's house. Up? There's Brad. Look, he's so well lit. Freaking, look at him. <laughs> Why don't we lit like that? He's got like nice side lighting, and he's got a get kicker in the jaw back. Jawline out. Jawline out. Get the jawline jaw out. Jawline. Jaw get the jawline out. Absolutely. Ooh, nice. Beauty. Beauty. <laughs> How's it going, Brad? Good. 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 So you're watching everybody's comments? Yes. Everybody's shebanging and saying hi and what's up and can we, can asking. We give him, should we give him a shebang? You want to give him a shebang? It might be early can for we a shebang. Do a whisper shebang. You can whisper shebang. Yeah. We'll do a three, two, one. Whisper. Everybody at home, just whisper, whisper shebang this. yourself. Three, two, one. Shebang. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> All right, first question. You ready? I'm ready. What is the goal with your hair? Where, where are you going with this? Oh, this ensemble. This is like, this. Well, what, I was re what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to gain some volume in the curl. I thought That's you were trying I'm to gain for. volume I'm trying to curl. get this. I've got to get the length a little bit down. And once I get the volume where I want it, you know, the sky's the limit. <laughs> I'm only asking this question because his wife asked that. Peter's wife, Peter is telling me, Peter, Peter is telling me, he goes, you know, my wife asked me, what's my goal with this? I about spit out my food. I was laughing so hard. Um, but uh, th great for what, you to be on the I, show I, and to be able to take any question. That's really cool. Of you. When are you going to really shave again? When are you going to shave it again? I don't know. That, well, what determines time, when you're going to shave it again? Well, last time I shaved it, I did a, I ran a thing where if I sold 50 pro boards, the Hurley Pro Pro boards, if I sold 50 in two weeks, I would shave my head. And we got to like 48. And then my buddy, Mike Shack had to go all the way and buy the extra two. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hey, first, a couple of important things. Like, there are important things. Uh, uh, first, uh, we're, of course, we're taking your comments. Uh, but I, gotta, I just got to break away from the Peter thing. Because, look, I, I've gone all in. I'm wearing, so Jared Poland gave me this shirt, the I Shoot Raw shirt, uh, as a gift. So he sent me a thing on Twitter and says, what, what size shoot, shirt do you wear? And I said, small. And uh, he brought me a shirt uh, to, to Photo Plus Expo. Now, I've never really met, met Jared before. He's, you know, Fro knows photo. But he gave me a whole goodie bag. And so, and even though Fro, as we will call him for short, has given this show a lot of crap over the years, <laughs> he was nice and gave us, I, I just want to share this because I'm going all in on Fro today. Oh, wow. He gave me a Fro knows photo bobblehead. And it also, it has, can, can, you have to pick this up on my mic. It has audio, and it's, it's, it's worth watching just for this. Hang him a bobber. I think it's time for a ranty McRanterson. <laughs> it's Postman Bro with a package for you. Wow. I have one of these, too, yeah. you know. You have I, one? I don't, yeah, he Did you get one? You know. No, he didn't even give me a shirt, so hey, He thanks, looks man. out for me. Appreciate it. Some some things should not have bobbleheads. This could be one of them. No, this is this is kitschy. Anyway, so <laughs> what, what he I, said if he said if I send you a shirt, we wear it on the show. I wear it on the show. I shoot raw. What's the first thing I said? Okay. I was like, dude, you're wearing red. <laughs> you know, this is and, and and dude, let me tell you, Fro, I'm going over the line here because I haven't worn a red shirt. I he hasn't black. worn. I, I haven't. I'm seen. the man in black. He only wears black. I'm going to say something because I've been getting trying to get Jared to do this, and Jared, you don't have much time because you never know how long this is. See, this is his brand. Like he's never going to lose the, his lovely locks. But this, I just I mix it up so. Now that Jared and I, I'm kind of trying to catch up to him, I want us to, to blow 
blow out our hair straight, both of us, and walk around uh, <laughs> WB Pride. I mean, I love to see that. Dude, you look like Caraminder. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> we should curl Caraminders <laughs> and then blow ours out. All oh, three God. of us walk around. All, All right, for funny. the love of God, let's get to this show. Well, we got to get All a picture right. of Caraminder up so people know right. why Fro, we said Fro that. Fro has a comment. Oh, that shirt is so amazing and Peter is so pretty. Does Peter shoot raw too? Oh my gosh, I only shoot raw. Well, of course. So I, <laughs> I saw Jared on, on, on the show floor and I said, dude, I shoot raw all the time unless I'm shooting, you know, JPEG. He goes, ah, I was just giving you crap. Because he kind of gives me crap like I'm like a secret JPEG shooter. I'm like, not a secret JPEG shooter. I'm a vocal JPEG shooter when I'm shooting sports. But everything else is raw. And to, to back this up, we're going to go to our unsolicited comment from my photo assistant, Mr. Brad Moore. Brad, what, what, what mode do we shoot in for everything but sports? Bra. There you go. Unsolicited. It was worth having you on the show and setting up all these expensive lights just for that. All right. Questions for Peter. Peter, I want to be straight with you. There's not a single freaking question. <laughs> There's nothing. I'm looking at this board where the questions come in. I have no questions. There's nothing. I see nothing. All right. Nobody's, well, Brad's got to get to work over there. Okay. I'm going to give you a question. What's that paper in front of you, Peter? Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. This is, this is the reason why I'm here actually. Well, I mean, yeah. a good reason is kind of to come on the grid. I always enjoy doing this with you guys. But you guys, this has been in the works for a long time. This is uh, the actual first chapter I my, my book. It's called The Headshot, and this is the headshot recipe that started it all. So we are, I am down here. I am working on this sucker, and uh, it is up for pre-sale. Yeah, it's at up. Peach Pit. Yep, you can get it at Peach Pit. I think you, you can probably also Pit. get it at Amazon, at Amazon or yeah. Barnes & Noble. Which but, means I really got to get my act together. <laughs> yeah, but it's, you know what it is? It's all laid out. He's just doing some tweaks to the text. It is a phenomenal book. You know how I knew it was really good? Because my editor, Kim Doty. So Kim, she's very nice, but you have to really impress her. You know, so she comes in my office. I kid you not. She comes in my office and sits down. And she, and she goes, I'm here to talk about Peter's book. I'm like, uh-oh. And she goes... It's really good. It's really, really good. I'm like, Peter? <laughs> no. It was like, she was like, it was, so I knew, because Kim doesn't, she doesn't throw out a yeah. lot, a whole lot of, oh, it's oh, great. Yeah, no. She came in and said, it's really, really good. So I knew at that point. So uh, they've been working with, with Peter. Thanks, I've been working Kim. with Peter. What's the name of it? The Headshot. The Headshot. It's as aptly named, very short and sweet, to the point. The headshot. The headshot. <laughs> All right. Hey, questions have come in while we've stalled. But uh, anyway, we're, we're excited to have you here. And uh, we're so close on this book. It's like We're closing in. I love it. I'm, I'm here tweaking in. And, uh, and as I'm reading it, I'm going, oh, my gosh, I talked about this. This is great. I'm so psyched. I love the layout of the book, too. Really? Like yeah, Jessica beautiful. did a wonderful she job. When is Incredible the book coming layout. out? That's the next question. <clears throat> the book is going to come out. First of the know? year, you think? I think that they're, what you're... In the, around the Kim's, first of the Kim's year? nodding. And Kim's, Kim's here. Hi, Kim. Kim's, Kim's here. Well, you never look out of the grid and see Kim there, do you? <laughs> Kim's office. Oh, you're That's how good pictures. the book uh, is. That's is, how good the book is. is. <laughs> All right, we have some questions. Peter, here we go. Pedro Jorge Foto. Or Pedro George. <laughs> Peter, when does the Peter Hurley bobblehead come out? That's a good Well, it'd be very tough because I'd have to figure out what my hairstyle is going to be for the first thing. That's That'd good. be first. It'd have to be removable hair. <laughs> it could go to shave to Maybe you'd have to have yeah. wigs for it. You know, what would that I yell? I, got, I guess work. I could yell some stuff. I got plenty of stuff I yell. A dude, it only needs to yell one thing. Yeah, Shabang. That's right. <laughs> uh, Rob Timko asked, Peter, you sold your Hasselblad. What is your new camera? I am now shooting with a Phase 1 IQ 250. How do you like it? Uh, I love it. Really nice? I love it. Very nice. I love the images. I love the software. I love, how many, I love it. How many megapixels is it? That sucker is 50. It's got a CMOS sensor in it. It's doing... CMOS? Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. It's CMOS. giving me up to 6,400 ISO, which so is... You, a, you were using changed, a BMOS? I was shooting... Well, I, I always shot like, medium format, and I could never get my ISO over 200. And then and my studio has this gorgeous north light, which I never used because it wasn't strong enough. Now, 6,400 ISO, people. Oh, man. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. How much does a camera like that cost? That's not a question that someone's asked, but I'm, you know. Yeah, that camera retails for $38,000. Everyone just pause and look at the screen. Okay, back. All right. $38,000. So it's a BMW 3 Series. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Paula Portersfield Izzo says... Uh, I'm a professional photographer and licensed mental health counselor in Florida. Uh, I have uh, been working toward integrating uh, the two into my private practice. So the 
mental health counseling and photography. Uh, and they said a great TEDx talk on cyphotology. 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 Yeah. Um, it's a good question. So finish the question. Yeah. I understand uh, that you have coined that term. Are you lending that term out or is it copyrighted? The term is, is trademark. So we trademarked it. Um, we are not lending it out uh, and we are using it. Uh, Anna Rowley and I are using it. We launched it in our TED talk. And um, we are looking for photographer psychologist combinations of of people to do this with us as we try and figure out how to build this build this thing across the globe actually to create a movement around it. It's a really interesting concept, and it's it's it just blows me away how well the program that we put together works with people. We've been working with companies on it, and they just flip out of the results. So it's interesting, really interesting stuff. Uh, where can they find um, your TEDx talk? They can go to the easiest place is just go to scifotology.com. So, Brad, can you get that up there? Scifotology.com. Or go to peterhurley.com and click on the scifotology. If I just Google gonna, Ted, TEDx and Peter Hurley, will I find yeah, it? Probably. Maybe. Well, I'm going to share it. If you it too. Google scifotology, you'll find yeah, it. Yeah. Tonight or tomorrow, I'll be embedding it onto my Facebook and there all Oh, there it is. Can I bring what up on my screen? The website? The website? Yeah, go to scifotology.com. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm looking over there because I see the screen. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. It's up. I'm sorry. Give me just a second here. I'm guessing you'll have to mirror. Now, you can guess that that picture was yeah. taken a little while ago. Uh, okay. Give me P -S -Y. the... P-S-Y. When your hair was blonde? Pho. P-H-O. No. Yeah. Photo. Photo. Loji. Okay. Can't find the server. Must have spelled it wrong. L O G Y. There's no L in there. You'd photo L O G Y. Yeah, I, I don't I have it. I thought of this word. I'm, I, I thought don't. of this word just like all my other words. Let me just do it. No, it's coming. <laughs> oh, you're rare cat sound. All right, is that it? No, is that it? No. These are all say psychology. Write yeah. the word f P S Y. Yeah. Photo. Let then just... after the O in photo, L O G Y. There you go. I should not be allowed to operate. There it is, top one. Top one. Now we're talking. Let him get the word. We? You're first. in business. Let me make it big. You're in business. All right. <clears throat> there she is. He's connected. Okay, so that was a shot, and if you if you if you do this, if you scroll, oh, this, you, you can oh. go to the psychologist, or you can go to the photographer. Which this was obviously not taken too recently. <laughs> so what was your goal at that point with your hair? My goal at that point, I think I was in growth mode. I thought it looks I, nice. I thought it looked nice. I thought it was a little bit conservative for me. I look to, I like to look a little rough around the edges. And this is the talk. And this is the talk. Well, there you go. Yay! Thanks. Yes. All right, we have a lot of questions right. coming in now. Uh, didn't Peter have a lighting and background setup that he was selling at one time? Is it no longer available, Peter? Okay, I do. Uh, I have a background setup called ProBoard. If you go to HurleyProGear.com, uh, there are three types. A, and we launched it here with the, and we yeah. have it here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. We have the glossy one here. Uh, I also have the. Do I have the matte black and matte white here? I don't know if we still. If I brought those, they must be here. So they're probably all here. I should have brought them out for the show. Um, but I've got a matte black one, I've got a matte white one, and I've got a glossy one, and they're available at HurleyProGear.com. Um, I was working on a lighting system called the Medusa lighting system. I get this question asked all the time, so I'm glad somebody asked it. And I sunk a ton of money into it, and I realized that LED technology is moving so fast that it's probably best if I take a step back, keep taking pictures, and let other people suss it out. And then when I feel like it's ready, I'm going to jump on board. And you guys, I feel like it's ready. So I'm jumping on board, and that's where I'm going to leave it. So when you start seeing videos of me shooting with these this new Thing. lighting setup down the road, which is happening in first quarter 2015, most likely, um, you'll get more information. You'll see. You'll, you'll find out what's going on. That's as much as I could say about it right now, but I'm very excited. Ooh. All righty. Hey, real quick, Meredith, can we jump over to Brad's camera? Just real quick. All right, and then back to us. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, this is my first show where Brad's been over there, too. Oh, dude, he's really usually very animated and, and involved. He's really, like, in the questions today. Cause now, so yeah, now that, they're, now that the questions are rolling in, it's, like, rolling. head down, like, trying to keep up with it. Yeah, okay. So we're, we'll, But we'll check back in with Brad numerous times. 
during the day. All right, All right. Uh, go ahead. You want to grab some here? Lonnie Utah, Utah. Lonnie Utah, did you copyright your headshot technique? I don't know that you could. Can you do that? I don't think so. I don't think you can do that. No. I don't know. Well, what, what's with the Amazon? Now, the squinch, you could copy. Couldn't you, like, do something with the squinch? I could copyright or, or trademark, trademark it. So you know what I yeah. think happened with Amazon? What Amazon was worried about was somebody comes along and copyrights shooting on a white background. Well, that basically puts Amazon out of business. So Amazon lawyers said, well, what if somebody did do that? What if somebody, even somebody joked about it. Well, we hope nobody ever copyrights shooting on a white background. Uh-oh. And so they, so the people did. were like, Amazon's going to come after you if you shoot on a white background. Yeah. Amazon could care less about what you're shooting on a white background. As long as they can still shoot on a white background. As long as they can background. still shoot on So it was a okay. smart move for them, but it, you know, everybody loves to blow those things out of proportion. That's Did I mention I'm wearing a fro shirt? I'm all in. We're all in. We're on all fro. in fro it's today. Fro day. All right. All right. Rob Feiner, does your family give you a hard time or eventually just get sick of you photographing them when you're on vacation? And how do you overcome that if they do? And then we'll ask the second part of the question in a minute. Oh, I love the second part of the question. <laughs> the first part of the question is, uh, I'll be lucky if I get them in front of my camera. I cannot get my, my kids and my wife to pay attention to me for two seconds. I agree. Let alone shooting them. Yeah. I mean, I, I, every time, like my kids. It's a battle. You know, yeah, it's, it's horrible. God, not mine. If I ask my daughter to pose, she'll pose for 45 minutes. Oh my gosh. She'll jump in there. I, I, it's just, she's, That's, and she's really photogenic. My kids will not, and then when they do, they look like they're in extreme pain. We're, mm. we're in Europe on a trip for the month of July. I went and I taught my workshop all over Europe. We went out every awesome city that there is. We went Stockholm, Zurich, Paris, Amsterdam, and London. It was like pulling teeth to get them to take pictures on like around like stuff that like I mean I'm like you're 11 <laughs> okay. years old I want to remember this yeah so here so here's that's I kind of use that same thing I was on vacation with my wife and my wife hates to have her picture taken and she's very photogenic but but she hates to have it taken so we were in I think uh, like Greece someplace uh, the, the the Broadway show no we we're in Greece and I and, and I and I said honey honey and she saw me she's like Ugh. and I said honey your kids when they're older, are not gonna see any pictures of you. What were you like, mom, when you were young? I don't have any pictures of me. And so she kinda, it, it like hit her right then, and from that moment on, for the rest of us time, anytime I wanna take a picture, she gives me a beautiful smile, and she'll, she's very patient. But it, <laughs> it was reminding her that your kids are not gonna have pictures of you in the future. This is the yeah. visual history of your life, and you're, you're, you're letting it slide away. That doesn't work for me. All right, the second part, <laughs> the second part <laughs> of Rob. Not for the kids, no. You know what, my kids and wife are probably watching, so you guys, hey, come on, lot, please, Let's, let's, let's get it together. And you have a beautiful family. We Your wife is beautiful. Your kids you are beautiful. Much, you're beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and see, I can't tell that to my kids. They won't. Kids, when you're older, you're not going to have any picture of yourself. I don't oh, care. no, no. That, that, that's yeah. just with, with my wife. Yeah. The kids, are, they're both You know, I can't cool. remember the last time the kids came to the studio and let me shoot them but just by myself without. Like, they'll come in for workshops and stuff, where, but I don't really shoot them during the workshops. I can't remember the last time my kids came to my studio for me to photograph. Well, I stopped bringing my, my daughter. She came one time to the studio. And we wanted to shoot, I wanted to shoot pictures of her to give a gift as Valentine, or Mother's Day for my wife. And, and Brad knows, we were on the set and she literally took over the shoot and she was posing Brad. Like she took over, she's got the camera, she's like six, and she's moving arms, moving arms now. Brad, stick your leg up, and God bless Brad, he just did everything she said. And he's like, I, I just don't get it paid enough for this. But she was, it, was, it was a wild shoot. All right, uh, Lisa Speakman. Wait, no, Rob's, end of Rob's. Oh, Rob, I'm oh, sorry, yeah. oh, God, I'll end of Rob's. This is, take, take this one, read it, and take okay, it, Okay, so Rob needs to, is asking about when my portable V-flats are going on sale, and I've come up with this concept of Hurley Pro, of everything being getting your studio on the road. Um, and one of the biggest things that that bugs me is is not having V flats when I move. So I designed these portable V flats, but they take a took a step back because I'm doing them with a little bit of a partnership, and uh, we're kind of doing a rebranding on it. So it's going to be a little bit, but it's probably going to be again in in the first quarter of 2015. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Chris Markson. Uh, Peter, I live in a country where it's it's. Did you you skip Lisa? You just didn't like that question. Oh no, I'm sorry. I did skip skip Lisa because the last time I started to mention her, I was rebuffed. So let's jump back up to Lisa. When are you going to sell the shebang button? My button still says that was easy. Um, I was gonna make shebang buttons, but the problem is, is that if you guys notice, we might have done a whisper shebang at the beginning of the of the show. 
but I never, it's very rare that you hear me saying shebang at a lo, in a low voice. So That's I got true. a bunch of samples. The, the volume on the things was just horrible. So I just canned didn't the whole right. idea. It wasn't loud enough. It was like shebang. it just didn't sound loud enough. It, I needed to be like shebang, you know, like, like, to, to, like the people. Shebang, I needed shebang. Shebang. That so all what we're going to, what, a, what a, my plan is to work it more into an app or something like that. So that oh. you, have an, you can have a shebang app on your phone. How's that sound? Is that yeah, easier? Sounds I pretty like good. That. There you go. Button so analog. Hey, yeah. we, got, we got a bunch yeah. of bunch of questions a here. But before app. we go on to more questions, we're going to take a short break. Hey, I do want. I do have some news. This is pretty big news for us. It's it's big news for. Um, we just got our first copies of Jay Mazel's brand new book. We produced this this uh, book for Jay, and it was published by our publishing partner, Peach Pit Press, and it's a light gesture in color. And if you've ever seen Jay talk. That, which camera? There we go. If you've ever seen Jay talk, uh, a lot, like at Photoshop World, a lot of his classes, you know, he's done have been called light gesture yeah. and color. And uh, Jay just did an amazing job on this book. It's not a book for beginners. This is for everybody who's ready to move on to that next level and you want to start really thinking about what makes great photography. That and it's it, it's not about f stops. It's none of that stuff. It really is the real. This is what it's really about. There are amazing pictures, uh, uh, really interesting, surprising like stories. When when I got it, uh, in its in its raw form and in like its manuscript, I read the entire book in one setting. I just sat there and read the entire thing, and it's like every other page you're like. And it makes you think about things in photography like we never have. Uh, I, I don't think they're actually for sale yet. I think they're just like hitting bookstores like right now. We just got our, our first copies. But you can find it at kelby1.com slash J. But congratulations to Jay for, for this uh, amazing book. We're very excited. Oh, we're giving some of these away. We're giving away two copies? Sweet. Three copies? Maybe. I forget. Maybe. We're giving some of these away. So, uh, so if, at the end of the show, we're going to be giving some copies of this. So make sure you see that. Also, if you get a chance, uh, we announced the winners of my worldwide photo walk this week over on my blog at scottkelby.com. We have 10 finalists and the grand prize winner. Lots of good shots. Lots, lots of good stuff. So don't show them all. Don't scroll too far. There we go. Don't show them all. Go see them. But I also wrote a description of why I chose each one. Like, I like this because of this. I like that because of that. And a lot of them are, frank, quite frankly, headshots on a white background. Anyhow, I'm kidding. I kid. Hey, uh, we've got that giveaway. We've got some uh, news at the end of the show. So stick around for that. And uh, we are going to take a short break. Don't go away. We're live here on the grid with Brad Spear and Peter Hurley. What kind of a person could stand shoulder to shoulder with soldiers on enemy soil and reach for a camera when they reach for a gun? What kind of a person can hold a camera to their eye and press the shutter button in a place where violence and crime is so rampant, each frame they take could be their last? Why would anyone choose to spend four years in the Scandinavian tundra just to tell a photographic story that's never been told before? Danger, extreme conditions, and tough issues might be enough to scare off most photographers. Now, meet the unstoppable women who run in when others run away, who press on despite overwhelming odds, whose images tell amazing stories. In a brand new series you'll see only here on Kelby One, these ladies share their stories of dedication, loss, and how they faced fear head on. Camera at the ready. These are trailblazers, powerful women of photography. It's a series you don't want to miss right here on Kelby One. Hey, we're back. Scott Kelby here with our special in-studio guest, Peter Hurley. And Mr. Matt Kleskowski, who's over here reading uh, Jay's book. book. Uh, hey, uh, RC, if you're out in L.A., RC's out there this week. He is teaching Adobe Photoshop for photographers. I believe that is to Friday, not tomorrow, but Friday. We keep relocating the fro um, bobblehead. I can't concentrate with it near me, so I have to move it. <laughs> you're lucky I didn't turn it back towards you. All right. So anyway, uh, if you get a chance, uh, you can uh, catch him. Just go over to kelby1.com, click on live, and you'll... Find his, uh, yeah, it's over there, somewhere there. What is that? Kelby1.com slash live slash something. So <laughs> just go to Kelby1.com slash live, you'll find, and uh, he's there. 
All right. And also, hey, I'll give away a ticket to my December. I think I have a, a seminar in Fort Lauderdale. I can't read it, but it's like something. Brad says yes. Are you going, Brad? I assume so. Can we, can we get a shot of Brad real quick? Hey, Brad, are you going? Do you know how many times a day I see that? Hey, Brad, did you bring a scrim? Did you ask me to? Yes. <laughs> then yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get back to some... Let's get back to some questions here with our, our special in-studio guest, <clears throat> Peter Hurley. You know, if, if, your, if your hair and Brad's beard ever got together, I can't even imagine. Chris Markson. Peter, I live in a country uh, where it's language, there is not even a word for headshot. Nobody seems really to know what a headshot is. Most of the people use really bad pictures around here. What would be your key and first move to start a business here? Hey, Chris, can, can, while we're, we're reading this, can you just real quick drop us a line what country you're in? Just say, hey, I am in. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Where is he? I don't know. I, I've heard this a lot. I've heard because I went and taught over in Europe and there's like nobody knows what the word headshot is, but they're starting to find out. Um, one thing that uh, is going on, which this kind of ties into what I see Oscar De La Villa asked uh, down below. Can you tell us your thoughts on the state of the headshot industry? And those kind of tie in right now. I believe that the headshot industry is the biggest, largest growing genre of photography other than selfies. Maybe. <laughs> Um, I just realized that what happened was my <clears throat> business model completely changed because I was shooting actors about 99% of the time. And what's happened in the last year, last two years, is it's gone from actors to shooting more personal branding type photos and a lot of corporate stuff. So I do about 50% um, actors and 50% corporate or personal branding or whatever. Everybody, there, there used to be a, a want for a good headshot, people be like, oh yeah, I want a good headshot. And it's no longer a want, it's a need. Like now yeah. you look like, you just look, you just don't look like you have your act together if you don't have a nice headshot. I mean, you, there's so many places where you can use it out there. And the thing is, is that we need photographers who can take them. So I started this, this website, ph2pro.com, to get headshot photographers uh, involved in a, in a movement type thing, and uh, I'm actually changing the name, so I'll announce it here. Some people know it, some people don't. Sure. I've decided I, to change the name to the Headshot Syndicate. So if you want to be part of the Headshot Syndicate, I like that. I yeah, like that. It's pretty it cool, right? Very New York. Yeah, right? it's the cool. Headshot Mafia. Yeah, exactly. So, well, I, I'm a sailor, and there were all these America's Cup syndicates that would always go and try and take over the cup. So our plight is to go, I don't know if it's a plight, but it's to go get and take over the headshot industry. Now, if you're in a country where headshot's not, not, a, not a term, what images are these called that people are using for LinkedIn for, I mean, I'm sure Facebook, uh, what other, I don't know what a LinkedIn, if LinkedIn's used worldwide, it is, right? Could be. You know, whatever, any, any of these types Sounds of social plausible. media outlets where people need a picture of themselves, you can take these personal style branding type photographs and call them whatever you want in that in that language. It's absolutely fine. Maybe you can get something started. I start words all the time if you haven't noticed. So, you know, why not? Yeah. Start a new word, try and get headshot going. People are gonna it's gonna latch on and people are gonna find it. And right now I think it's just a growing trend and, and uh to the point where I um basically am working at, worked out a deal with about.me and we're doing a uh, story of me day. So, and I need, uh, the plan is to get photographers all over the world to do this me day and photograph people for their about.me pages. So you'll be hearing more of that if you go sign up for ph2pro.com. If, if you're in the headshot syndicate, you'll hear more about it, but I'm sure these guys will help me push out whatever you I need to Hey, we, get just, we just heard from uh, Chris. Chris is in Germany. And so, Chris, to help you out, there actually is a German word for a uh, headshot. It's Bundesbahn. So that is the actual German word for headshot. You know the name of the word? What, what is it? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. Right, Brad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't Brad. Brad, okay. He just, no. We, Brad had the greatest expression, but. Go, Brad. Wait, can we, can we look at him? Look how nice his lighting is. Seriously. And he's voguing. Why are you voguing? <laughs> All, right. All right, we're back. All right, we got some more questions for Peter. Uh, this one's from Peter Kasmala. Peter's uh, 
uh, Pete Casbala asked Peter, Peter, do you have any special things that you change when shooting someone with a very pale complexion? In other words, do you use different lighting, warming the color temperature, stuff like that? That's a good question. I mean, I think you do it, that you would work the same way as if you were shooting somebody with a dark complexion. I mean, I'm opening up for dark people, I'm closing down for lighter people. I happen to like uh, light skin on a white background. When I shoot on a white background, it's just amazing to see somebody kind of, like, when you get that really pale skin. Yeah. I just shot this girl. Um, Glows. Yeah, it's, ama it's amazing. I shot this girl that's really, really light skin. Uh, her name's Elena Campor. She's in the movie uh, Men, Women, and Children. So check her out. She's really got light skin, and I shot her on a white background, and I shot her a bunch of different ways. And it's just basically, you know, you're stopping down a little bit maybe, but it's nothing more than that. I don't really do anything um, out of the ordinary that you wouldn't think you would do. You're just not lighting them quite as, quite as brilliantly. Maybe you'll have to change your settings from the previous client. All right, the next question is from Rob Foldy. Yes, Rob Foldy of Getty Images. Before we take Rob's question, I think we should talk a little bit about Rob and what makes Rob Rob. I'm happy to speak about Rob. Yeah, we're not going to say anything about Rob. <laughs> Rob's a buddy of mine. I know he's holding his breath because last time we brought up his name on here, we had uh, Elsa Garrison uh, was our guest, and she's like one of only two female Getty sports photographers in the entire world. Wow. There's one in New Zealand and Elsa. Wow. And so right, Rob, like, had, had, I don't know if you sent a message in, but I said, I warned her about her. I'm like, he's kind of handsy. If you see him on the sidelines, which he's not really, of course. He's, he's a buddy. <laughs> so uh, Rob's a great guy. Great, great photographer. Uh, okay. Rob says, what makes a great headshot? How do pose, lighting, and expression all work together to make a good headshot? I know every subject is, every subject is different, but how do you learn what looks good? Uh, the rules, for lack of a better term. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I have rules of my own that I've kind of put upon myself in terms of that. For me, it's about technically first getting the shot technically right before the person steps in front of your camera. So you're not thinking about the light or the. I do the same setup that I've done pretty much since 2004. I really yeah. don't change the light much at all. So it really just becomes about working with that person. And for me, and I'm, I'm in the midst of doing this night right now, writing this book about how to, how to get great headshots, and I'm talking about my shtick and how I work with people. It's, you're working with a human being. Everybody's gonna behave differently in front of your camera. Your job is to take somebody who's stiff and lifeless and make a picture out of them. You know, get, get them to create a picture for you, with you, as a team. I like to use a word that I call lookability. I want my pictures to have lookability. So, and, and a lookability is essentially to make people want to look at them. I want them to look at it and wonder what the person's thinking. How did I capture that expression? I always pick expressions that are a little off kilter because it, I pick expressions that I know it would be very difficult for another photographer to, to get that kind of expression out of the person. That's good. So. No, oh, that's a good angle. And. I, yeah, oh yeah. And I and. like, I do something that I, that I have another term that I talk about in the book called camera invisibility. I like to photograph somebody and make it look like it, they weren't in front of a camera. And that creates the lookability. And that's kind of like my go-to move. When somebody, when somebody walks into my studio, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm watching them, I'm watching them walk around and then I go, okay, they look all normal. They get in front of the camera, they go like this. If they didn't do that, then it would be easy to take a headshot. Yeah. It's not easy. You, so. uh, I mean, because I, I was on the other side of the camera with you, and you, you do, you know, you said about the expression, and you try to get a different expression, and that, that was the thing that struck me with you, um, out of anybody else that's ever taken my picture, is, is you're, you're kind of, you're kind of giving cues. You're like, think about this, dude, and it, sometimes they're silly things, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're not silly things, but you're, you're telling people to think about something that they might nor, no, not normally think about. And that gives those expressions that you don't see every day, but they're they're pretty candid expressions too. So, yeah, I want them to be real. They, I think part of it is that the photographer, if it, if it's a reactive expression, it means it came from an outside stimulus, which would be me, when I was shooting you. I'm trying to do that yeah. to get your get you to stop thinking about the camera, think about you know other things. And it was and it was it was such a. <laughs> Well, it, was, it was such an experience. You've been that, there too. You know? I've been there. Actually, so, you were there when he was right. there. Right. So was... I'm getting my my headshot done from Peter, and you know I'm all in place. And he's right. You do. You know, especially as a photographer, we used to be on the other side of the lens. Well, here I am sitting in front of his lighting and all, and I'm kind of standing there. And he says, "Okay, 
turn your navel towards the Tropic of Capricorn. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Click. <laughs> it's like he gets you yeah. in that moment where you're yeah. not even, you're, you're thinking about what he said and you're not thinking about what's going on. You're like, I turn my navel towards what? Click. You know, he, he, you, you really have a brilliant yeah. way of, of getting you to not be thinking about what's going on and thinking about other things. And it, it's, it, it works well. Another thing that you did when, when you were here, I don't think it was this time, but maybe the time before, I had done a shoot and, and I wanted you to look and help me find the right photo. And, and we, let's say we had 50 photos on the screen. You're like, no, 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 no. And one of the things that, you, 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 that I remember you sticking out was like, she's not giving you anything. She's giving you nothing. She's dead, you know. And you know what? When we've done critiques on the, on the grid, you see that so many times where the, the person there is just they're there they're either looking bored or just unhappy and all and then you're like see now there's and 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 i mean it, w it would be a wonderful class to do on just literally the art of editing and and how to know what which is the photo you said something yeah, interesting I get earlier that asked a lot about that yeah, yeah because you know that'd be a good class for kelby one that's an interesting class guys how many people would like to see a class on that I, I would could, love to see a class on that. Yeah, maybe we can mix that. Because, be cool. it up. Because it is an, an art, and it's something yeah. that has to be developed. It's like color correction. I talk about this on my tour. Like, I'll open a picture and go, oh, my God, it's blue. The plate's blue. And they're like, no, it's not. And you remove the blue, and they're like, oh, that was so blue. I, I think it's getting to recognize what is the winning shot out of 50 yeah. is an art. And the reason why I can open a photo and see there's a blue cast is because I've done it again and again. And that's what we have to do with editing. You do it a class on that would be... That's a good idea. Would be nice. We came up with that here. Yes, we just did. Now. Right. That's good. And, like you're, that. and you're so great at it. And they just sit in here, have you go through my pictures and show me why certain ones weren't one. I, I, I really learned a lot. I remember doing that. I'm kind of blown away that you remember that. Well, Br I mean, Brad, Brad wrote, I'm not sure we can say what he told me on this show. So when Brad was getting, I was watching Brad get his done. <laughs> and and you, he took a beautiful headshot, I think, of Brad. I think it's, it's wonderful. Um, but he did say something very, <laughs> I don't know if we can say it. I don't think you, you tweeted it out. It's up to you. Yeah, you we tweeted it. Show, can we say it on the show? Do you remember specifically what it's it was? It's your show. Do whatever you want. Well, we'll let Brad say it. It's the way it's not us. Oh, gosh. <laughs> what did kidding? you say, Brad? You told me to flex my ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it was that bad. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Quick misdirection. <laughs> Oh my God! I can't even see the shirt. You gotta take the yeah, jacket yeah, off. Yeah, I know, but yeah, I never even know what it said. It, uh, it says, "I shoot rad." It, it looks is like. It, is he I telling shoot, you to flash? It looks like Ram. Sh ra. It's I shoot. Ra. I know. I know. <laughs> shoot ra. That's what it says. I shoot ra. All right, next question. Okay, Scott King. Hey, we know Scott King. Hi, Scott King. We love Scott King because Scott King helped us find the greatest burger in all of. Was it Texas? <laughs> Where does Scott King live? Houston, it is Houston, thank God. Right? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Scott King says, what was the hardest part about shooting Matt's, head Matt's headshot when you did this? Was he a good model? Oh, <laughs> I mean, I, he was, I think we, I was excited to do it. I want, I, I, the thing is, is that everybody who gets in there, I really want, I have to nail it. Like, it's got to be good. So, I... You did. I you, I, everybody, everybody commented on Can that. Can we like, bring it up? Hey, Brad, find here, go, here, go to mattk.com. Let's bring it up. And then just click on the photo on the right because it'll take you to my About Me page. Maybe. Man, we got a quick internet. There oh, it there it is. Oh, there I just it saw is. it. I just, I saw, just it. saw it. But just click on it. There it is. Look at that click sucker. Click on it and it'll take you. Look at that sucker. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Man, that's a big shot. Look, see, yeah, he's, it. Got it, he's got it on his About.me. That's what I was speaking with the founder of this thing. And guys, if you don't have a About.me page, can you go sign up, please, today? Go, oh, they're go cool. Yeah. Up. Okay. Go get it done. All right, Sean Sean King, who is a former. So I want to know what I want. I what was, oh, oh, you yeah, never said what the hardest part really was. Say anything. You have to look at the photo. No, I, I didn't think it was hard at all. I think we were kind of both excited about it, but it was like I, I was like, I'm going to nail this guy. I get, to, I'm going to get this sucker, because he's photographed a lot. So you have a ton of photographs of yourself, I believe. You know. Yeah. So I wanted to do something. Are you and kidding? this he's thing, got a since I've shot it, you've been using it consistently. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's my what was your take you. on it? My headshot's yours. Yeah, I know the one on. Um, mm -hmm. on uh, that's my official yeah, headshot. Yeah, my I, my, I mean, my take was it, it was much faster than I thought. Like I was expecting to go sit down for like twenty minutes, and yeah, no, pretty much great. like seven minutes later, you're like you're like right, click 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 click, and you'll flex your ball sack, click click click. <laughs> 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 well, and then we're and then we're done. I guess the network sensors will be hearing from them after this show. <laughs> 
Thank goodness there's a seven second delay. Hey, uh, we just, Brad says, it's time for a, I, I'm not saying it because we've already said it twice, but put that, put that phrase in there. It's time for a break. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, something, something, blah, blah, blah. Things will be flexed. Things will be. Hey, where's the Jared? We're going to relocate the Jared Poland. I'll take them. I want them near me. All right. I didn't get to spend enough time we'll be right with them last week. week. Don't go away. I started to oh, there. We go. Need a little boost? Then fill up on fuel. Packed with practical tools and tips that will help you quickly advance your creative skills, these short ebooks get right to the heart of what you need to learn. Learn to shoot breathtaking nature photography, teach yourself game design, or impress your friends with the rock and design of your new website. Written by top authors and trainers, Fuelbooks offers friendly, straightforward instruction and innovative ideas to power your creativity. Starting at just $5, every Fuelbook comes in three formats, Mobi, EPUB, and an elegantly laid out PDF, so you can choose the reading experience that works best for you on whatever device you choose. Fuelbooks, designed to inspire you. website at squarespace.com start your free trial today hey we're back Todd Kilby here with Matt Klaskowski and our in-studio guest Peter Hurley hey that that ad that just ran from Squarespace um, I, I keep my sports portfolio and all that stuff on Squarespace I have a Squarespace and love it um, but so here's my question so so Sean's here from Squarespace and uh, he's just hanging out in the studio like drinking um, so I'm on Squarespace the last one six and all you have to do is flick a switch to move to seven right yeah should I do it? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. I'll do it tonight. It looks cool. I watched the video. I'm like, oh my god. There's no, there's no adjustment you need to do. do you I don't have to do anything. I just flip the switch and it works. He says I flip the switch. Really? I'm flipping the switch tonight. It looks cooler. It looks cooler. Yeah. Okay, great. I love. It. I'm all, all like for cooler. It. Hey, so I'm gonna tell you guys something for we're rolling here that um, I, I I was I'm surprised that I've done. I have started ready an Instagram account. Dum, da, da, dum. dum 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 What I'm trying to do with it is to show not the same stuff that I show on like Facebook or Twitter. Because that's like, do I really need a third, you know? So I'm trying to show just stupid stuff, you know, like fun stuff, you know, like I don't know what. Food. Fun stuff. What do people show on Instagram? I don't know. The Food. same stuff they show on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, but I don't want to show the same stuff. So anyway. Well, we, we, we put some pictures of us. No, we put some pictures of us today. today. And, uh, Peter had his shirt off. It was weird. Anyway, <laughs> um, but uh, so if you go to Instagram, I'm, I'm uh, Scott Kelby, by the way, on Instagram. So go to Instagram. Check it out. I don't know what else to say. Hey, I could take one right now, right? That's what I love about Instagram because it's like it's so easy to use. And I tried to be the actual last person on the planet to use Instagram. So I do feel kind of stupid. But, oh, I never hit share on that. Oh, my God, I never hit share. I hit time for the grid (laughs) about 45 minutes ago. Nicely done. It's a good picture of Peter and me and Matt anyway. So I'm on Instagram. Find him. All right. Hey, we got some new classes coming out tomorrow. So, oh, well, first this class I think already came out. So uh, I did this. I I launched a new series of classes, Mm -hmm. and it's a different kind of class. Uh, I've, I've released two of them. One was called A Photographer's Guide to Paris, and one is called A Photographer's Guide to Rome. So it's not about the camera and the gear, but it's like if you're thinking of going on vacation to Rome, I go through all these different locations and give you the GPS coordinates. I give you a PDF to download. And I basically take you like, hey, there's this elevator around the backside. It's $7. And the, you know, I give you all the, this thing allows tripods. This one doesn't. Try to get there at dawn. You can get permission over here. You know, I try to give all, That's you know, cool. like for photographers, but not the average 
stuff, not like, hey, the Eiffel Tower, make sure you shoot it. But <laughs> I'll, I'll say, hey, if you can go two and a half miles from the Eiffel Tower on the top of this building, believe it or not, they let you, you know. So it's all that kind of stuff. So my Rome one just went up. It's called A Photographer's Guide to Rome. And I've gotten a lot of great feedback on it. So thanks to everybody that's Friend already of watched watch it. Friend of mine watched it. He says he's going to, to Italy. So he was psyched because he said it, it yeah. looked like it was going to help out a lot. Well, I, I really try to make it, you know, because I had to kind of do all this research and get friends and people to help me and all. And so uh, next I'm going to try to do is uh, A Photographer's Guide to Prague. So that's hopefully coming up next. Uh, also, we have two camera basic class is coming up uh, and they are uh, something black magic designs pocket cinema camera and their 4k production camera so there you go I, I don't know what's wrong with my my I can barely read stuff <laughs> I'm serious like I've never had trouble reading Try that. squinching it's the squinch. Yeah, I'm squinch. I don't or maybe squinch. you squinch too much. <laughs> maybe I know. I don't know. Anyway, go go check out those new classes. Peter's got an at, eternal squinch at kelby1.com. Yeah. Right, we just have a few more minutes. Always let's there. let's blast through with these. Uh, we're gonna do them rapid fire, so make rapid fire answers. Okay. Here we go. Sean right. King, can you tell us about your worst headshot experience with a customer? Worst. You miss one. I know. We're just gonna blast. Through. Are we? Just, we're just blasting. We're blasting. Um, uh, can you worst worst headshot experience? A uh, ton of them. Uh, quick one, really quick. I'm sitting in my studio shooting a client. I look over to the side, and there's a woman walking in the door, and she gets to like this the the, the doorway where I can actually see her, and she just starts crying. <gasps> and I was like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even say hi. I didn't do anything. <laughs> no, I didn't do a thing. And she's there crying. And I was like, I, wait, you walked into my studio. And she's like, I ain't having my picture taken. <laughs> and I was like, well, what are you doing here? We don't have to do it today. No, I have to. I wrote a story and they need the picture for tomorrow. Oh, sir, and I was like, oh. oh, my God. I said, I said, oh, my gosh. So I was like, stop what I'm doing. I'm like, had to calm her down. I was like, just sit down. I got to get this other person. And it just, just, if you really need just, I can't shoot you if you're crying, though. So I calmed her down. I got the other client out of there. I brought her in. I was like, look, you know, I start, it's kid gloves. You take it easy on me. Like that was probably the most shocking thing that ever mm. happened. And afterwards she got amazing pictures and, and was she, was, happy with she was so happy. Yeah. She wasn't happy. She wasn't sure until she submitted it for the, for the publication. And then other people liked it. And, and then she was yeah. like, really? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Gavel asks, Amazing. on your page, in the leading lady section, so this is your, your portfolio, why are all the headshots with their tops cut off? Is there some specific reason for this? And I'm going to add on to that. You mean like Matt's shot we just showed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I like, I like, uh, I like the proximity of the image to the, to the frame. So with actors, I always had an 8 by 10 space to work with. And whenever, and that's your real estate as an actor. Like you're selling this thing as a headshot. And I like the horizontal format. So I want them in your face as much as possible. So for me, it's much more important to have the information of the shoulders and this information right here. So it shows a little bit about what they're wearing and stuff than to have you the top of your head. So I crop right about there. And I ha I've had clients ask me, hey, can you, I'll shoot them. And I crop every one, all of them on my set side. They're all covering. I have a client go, go home, come and, and call me back. Hey, can you put the shots up where you, where you uh, have the top of my head in the frame? And I shoot full frame. I always crop in camera. I'm like, I didn't, did you see a shot like that while we were shooting? <laughs> there wasn't one. I don't shoot like that. So I said, don't worry about it. Everybody knows that part of your head's there. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram. Okay. Hey, uh, good, good, good answer. Good answer. Uh, Ahmed Butalak asks, and I may be saying that wrong. Sorry, Ahmed. Uh, have you tried anything else besides headshots? Have you done landscape, street photography, macro? I, uh, I shoot headshots on a daily basis. I shoot a lot of portraiture landscapes. I've, I've shot one that I put on my wall. I was actually, I was, I, I was out in, uh, in Napa and I was driving down the road and I, pulled over and I was like, this looks cool. And I shot it. I rarely see stuff like that, but I shot it and I liked it and I put it up on my wall. But I very rarely shoot uh, landscape. Macro stuff, I, I've done some still life stuff. Um, I do shoot some fashion um, and a lot of portraiture. I just- Let me ask you this, if you could, if you could shoot anything else, what would it be? If I sh like could maybe, shoot- Maybe, you know, do, do you have like, you ever like, man, I wish I was like into- 
Well, my favorite thing and that I do do is, is shooting celebrities for different magazines and publications. And, and I did an exhibition on the lost people. Like those yeah. kinds of jobs are my favorite. Um, I would like to get more of that. Cool. Interesting. <clears throat> All right. Are we moving on? Yeah. What's this? Uh, Lino, Lino guy? What gets you more? Oh, this is a good question. Uh, what gets you more juiced up, shooting or teaching? Ah, that's good. Um, I think that I'm a shooter at heart. Like, I am a shooter. Like, I don't think I ever will stop shooting. I mean, my shooting is is the thing to me, and it keeps me fresh and everything. But I started teaching, and I love it. I love it because there's a lot of people watching that have taken my courses and stuff. And when they show me their work, I've actually told some of them. I'm like, look, I want you to get your work together from before you started with me. And then I want to, you show me your body of work now. We should yeah. do that. I want to do that with them. That would be really cool. That's what gets me juiced up when you guys should bang it. And it means a lot. It really means yeah, a lot. Yeah, there's nothing like it when you see somebody succeed like that. I enjoy it. Like, I, I do the headshot intensive. I can't shoot from, like, 9 a.m. in the morning to, to midnight. I get, I, I'm a mess. But I can teach from 9 a.m. in the morning till midnight. Yeah. So I get jacked up by, you know, just, oh my, I, I guess it would be the same. Um, so I, and I'm the type, I'm, I've got a major issue with downtime. I don't have any because if I did, I'd probably lose my mind. I'm not good with that. Ask my wife. I'm just, I always have to be having something going on. It's just kind of the way, the way I am. I don't know. But it, it works because I, I constantly am teaching and I'm constantly shooting. So it, it works out just All fine. Right. We're going to answer these last couple ones, and then we've got some news. Okay. Mira. I don't know how to pronounce that. Meyer Kipf. Peter, two questions. First, how would you direct your model if they do not speak or speak very little English? And secondly, if, uh, if, you, if your Kino lights were gone, what modifiers would you use? And what would, would you use flash or other continuous lights? So, well, number one, first, how would you direct the model speaks very little or no English? Well, I love that. I mean, I love doing that. I love directing people that speak very little or no English because I just, I just start talking to them whether they know, know it or not what I'm saying. I don't care. Like, I direct with my hands a lot. So I'm on a tripod, and I'll just go to them. Just <laughs> boop. Yep. And I get the, you wouldn't, they're looking at me like, and then they crack up, and it just works. I just you just have to practice it. You have to be really good at it. So I love doing I love doing that stuff. Okay, second question. Um, I just did it last week. I had a girl that came over from uh, Switzerland. She didn't speak English. She was I guess she was Spanish, and my Spanish is horrible. Even though my wife's Venezuelan, it's, a, it's terrible, but it should get better. And I did that, and I got amazing, amazing pictures. They're on Facebook actually. Um, Lionel Claus, you can look up him, and he's got the pictures there. Uh, okay, and the other question was what? Oh, if I, I do use strobe. I use, I, I use Pro Photos all the time. I just got a bunch of B1s. I love them, and I use their soft boxes, and I like really softening the light, so I'll put the baffle on the inside, and on the outside, I'll put the, uh, the other diffusion, and, uh, and I shoot them all the time. I just shoot the, shot the B1s on your stage mm -hmm. at PPE, and I Maybe did it. B1s are nice, aren't yeah. they? I love the B1s. B1s rock. B1s. Mmm. B1s. B1s, Can we baby. whisper shebang? Yeah. Shebang. Okay, sorry. We love the B1s. So I've got, I've got um, my same setup that, it, that looks like the Kino setup, but I just do it with the B1s, and it's more portable for me and stuff. So, Peter, when I say we're going to bang through these questions, what, is the, what does that? Here's What's a question. I trying what to do does it? that mean to you? I have to speed up my answers. You don't have to speed them up. But if you could okay, I'm gonna hit them. them a bit. Okay. Bev Peter. Compton. We're doing Bev? You're missing yeah. all these other ones? We don't do them in order. Okay. <laughs> Peter, in your opinion, do you, th do you think well-known photographers got there by just showing their work alone, or did they get a lucky break? <laughs> we don't do them in order. <laughs> we don't do them in order. <laughs> there's no rules. Uh, there's no rules, Peter. <laughs> it all starts with the work. If your work rocks... And it gets out there. You'll get a lucky break. You will get a lucky Yeah, exactly. You're going to get a lucky break. It all stuff, people ask me about marketing. If, you're, if your work sucks, why are you marketing it? Get your work better. Once you market something that's good, you get good work out there, it's going to get noticed. Get your, you get your, up your game. That was good. Yeah. It was concise? So I, yeah, concise. You had some catchphrases? Yeah. All right. D uh, David says, do you have any favorite techniques to loosen up the subject? 
Well, I tell them what we said before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John, what lens are you using on the Phase 1 camera? 110 millimeter leaf shutter. 110 millimeter uh, leaf shutter. J Deep asks, some of the times it happens that my clients shy away a lot when I tell them some action to do. You know, like, you know, the actions like the jawline. They seem to have trouble to pose, even if I show them that their double chin is visible. Any tips on that? I would, well, you've got my video. I mean, a lot of people have told me that they, I show them the video. I show, I, I try and convince my own clients to get their jawline out and they don't do it. I got to show my own video. <laughs> you know? Dana, that's video. crazy. The, that's, actually, that's the, you should show them the cyphotology video before you shoot them. That one's really good. The TED Talk. It's like, it's like, a main, you haven't seen it yet. I haven't Have seen it, but I'm going to be sharing it tomorrow. Yeah, I'll watch it, it when yeah. I share it. All right, he's going to watch it. He's going to watch it. All right. Hey, we're going to take a short break. We have some, some uh, news when we come back from the break. The first thing is, did you miss Photo Plus East? Because, well, we were there, but I missed part of it. Why would you not go to that? Well, if you didn't go, because not everybody can go. People okay. have jobs, lives, okay. you know, things like that. Uh, our own Mia McCormick, lives in New York. Uh, she right. did some amazing field reports. And you can find the complete show coverage uh, over at our blog at kelbyone.com slash blog. And she's done all kinds of, you know, she went around the floor. They talked to different people. So if you didn't get to go to the show, here's kind of a way to check it out. All right. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we have news. And uh, Peter will be here. Matt will be here. Brad will be. Can we just real quick go to Brad? Just for a second. And back. Thank you. That's a human bobblehead as opposed to the fro movable bobblehead. We need to move them somewhere else. We'll move them on the break. Mm -hmm. Stick around. We'll be right back. And we, of course, we have the giveaway of Jay's book coming up too, so don't go away. Here at Kelby One, we're launching an innovative new tool for beginners called Beginner Start Here. It'll lay the foundation needed to understand your camera and walk you through how to capture beautiful images. And the best part is, all you have to do is tell us a little bit about yourself, such as your camera manufacturer, your DSLR model, and what you're interested in. And we'll design a custom curriculum to help you take your photography to the next level. It's that simple. It's the perfect way to learn at your own pace, on your own time. Plus, with a subscription, you get access to our online training wherever you are, so you can replay specific clips or even repeat the entire class if you'd like. We'll take you step by step, right through the process, so you can start taking good images in no time. And as you grow, we have a huge library of classes on all different kinds of photography techniques that can help you take your photography beyond the basics. So if you're just starting out and itching to turn that mode dial to something other than auto, then this is for you. And we're passionate about teaching you how every step of the way. Start here at KelbyOne.com today. I don't need to say it. All right, hey, we are back. Uh, we want to tell you how to enter the contest real quick first because we're giving away three copies of Jay's brand new book, Light, Gesture, and Color. It's not even in stores yet. We got our first advanced copies and just an, a, an amazing book. I mean, Jay is a, a living legend, uh, you know, of, of American photography and, and just he, he did a brilliant job with it. And I, I give him... 1,000% credit. But I do want to give a little credit to Kim, our editor, and Jessica. They did a beautiful job. It's just a beautiful book. Where do you go to enter this contest? You go to kelby1.com slash contest and tell us the name of your show and tell us, I don't know, the name of your show. No, tell us the name of the show you're watching and tell us the, uh, you know, I guess that's it. The prize that you want. Well, there's only, there's only, one, only, prize. Giving one, prize. There's only one prize. Say Jay's book or whatever. Wait, aren't you giving away a Fort Lauderdale ticket? you giving away one of these? Dude, are you think I don't give away that? That's got sentimental value and a battery. Aren't you giving right. away a Fort Lauderdale ticket? I'm sorry? Fort Lauderdale ticket? Oh, a Fort Lauderdale ticket. Yes, I am giving away a ticket to my Shoot Like a Pro Tour in Fort Lauderdale coming up uh, December or something. First? December 1st, Brad thinks. Like Monday? Said, first? Could be. <laughs> are you going, Brad? Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, Brad will be there. Look at your itinerary. Look at your itinerary. Okay, so I, I mentioned that we had some news, and the news is this. Um, we're sad to announce that this is Matt Kluskowski's last episode of The Grid. He is leaving Kelby One, and he is going to On One Software. But before we just kicked Matt out the door, <laughs> I wanted to, to take a few moments to oh, look God. at... The love, the laughter, you know. So uh, I, I actually, if I can just start this real quick, I, I have a little 
Lightroom presentation. So this is a shot taken the very first time, uh, like Matt and I ever went out for a shoot. This was in 2006 at Red Rock Canyon out in Las Vegas. And, uh, and uh, that's what Matt looked like in 2006, disheveled. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see? Can you see? Everything? Oh, I can see. Yeah. All right, but uh, I want to look up there. What I wanted, yeah, it's better there. So I wanted to show you though was, uh, so you know, Matt and I started this show. We've had other shows before, and we started. Uh, it all started with our first video show, which was uh, Photoshop User TV. We'd actually done a thing, and I'm not making this up, called Photoshop Radio. <laughs> and, I remember that. And I, I, I think I might even have a shot okay. of that. Yeah. So here's where we recorded Photoshop oh Radio. Uh, that's that's Matt and uh, Dave Cross. Let's see, let's that was in Dave Cross's office. In Dave Cross's office. That was Matt. And we would all pile in there and we'd turn on a microphone and we would uh, talk about Photoshop. And that's kind of hard to do. It's, it's You'd say, okay, picture the layers palette, right? All right, now picture duplicating it. So it was, it was, <laughs> yeah. but it was fun. We, we we joked around a lot and stuff. And so we decided to to start our own video podcast. Now we really didn't have the the um, the gear to do it, but we all sat in an office and we were going to do all this big fancy stuff. And at some point, somebody said, "Well, do we want to wait six weeks until marketing does this, or do we want to do it like tomorrow?" We didn't actually launch it tomorrow, but it was like two days later. Yeah. So I brought you a little clip. The, the video quality is awful because we did not know how to make it any better. So I want to show you a little bit of the first office, uh, the first one. It was actually filmed in my office, me, Matt, and Dave in my office against just a solid wall with the monitor that I use for my laptop on the wall. So uh, we're going to bring up the volume and everything here, too. So let's see if we can get it to play. See, I thought you were going to have the Steam episode. And now for the week of October 24th, Photoshop <clears throat> TV is on the air. Welcome to Photoshop TV from the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And here's your host, the Photoshop guys, Scott Kelby, Dave Cross, and Matt Kloskowski. <laughs> How's that? Right, welcome oh, welcome <laughs> to the episode ever of Photoshop TV from the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. We're the Photoshop guys. Let me introduce you to my co-hosts here. First, we got in the middle of here. Matt Kloskowski, rockin' the house-key. Hello. Look, he's got the rockin' the house -key shirt on. And Dave Cross. Not rockin', rockin the cross -key. Rockin' the something. Anyway, let me tell you, this is what used to be Photoshop Radio, but thanks to the innovations that Apple has made in iTunes for both Mac and Windows, now it's a video podcast. All right, we're gonna program. we're gonna stop that. <laughs> what? So I don't know if you noticed, but uh, I was the world's largest human at that point. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know. I think I was stung by 100 bees that day. Anyway, so th that's kind of where we, we started all the, you know, the, I think the thing that, you know, kind of got us out there. It's hard to believe that show ever was very successful, too. Yeah. <laughs> it actually was. It like, actually took off like one, crazy. The like, number one show on now, the... Now, you're going to see the next set. We were only in this office one time. It was so crowded. We're bumping against each other. And also, we actually moved out to the graphics department and did our second show. And I think I have the set here to show you. Uh, but this, yeah, it took it took off like crazy. And we were like the number one in the world in technology in like every country there was. But uh, anyway, so now Matt won't be able to hear this in the studio. But we picked out some some music that's kind of like... Barbara Streisand singing the way we were oh, <laughs> that will be playing as I show you the next images. So you guys at home will hear it. Matt won't hear it because we don't hear the audio back here in the studio. But is that really uh, the music that's going on? <laughs> yeah, no, it's nice. They they picked it. It's nice. So uh, this is uh, Matt hanging out with Felix uh, when our offices used to be kind of out in the open. And this is Matt, a very famous picture of Matt at Midnight Madness, passing out uh, the the Midnight Madness donuts. It's a, uh, a the Krispy Kreme hats. That, the Krispy Kreme, uh, yeah, the Krispy Kreme hats. Uh, this is a portrait I did of Matt. Actually, let me see if I can zoom back. It's a portrait I did of Matt for a series that I did, and it was on uh, musicians who are also guitar players. And so, uh, <laughs> all right, photographer. Now, now this was Matt. We took this in Japan, right? Yep. So we went to Japan and did a Photoshop World in Japan that Adobe hosted. And uh, this photo is actually you can't tell it because he looks pretty youthful, but it's it's honestly highly retouched. The original is that's the original unretouched photo. Yeah, it's, it was a rough year. It was. It was. All right. So oh gosh, these this thing's like zoomed in really really big. There we go. All right. So this is when Matt and I were out shooting with Bill Fortney. Uh, you were still shooting Canon back then, and then you went to Nikon, and now you're back on Canon. But um, we were out uh, in shooting in the worst light humanly possible in Zion National Park, right? Yeah. 
And that, I was wearing a photo vest, which you know that was a long time ago. And, and this was the shot I took of Matt to, to show highlight clipping. <laughs> it really was a demo Do file. Do you remember where that was? No. That was when we went to see Monty Zucker's. You're right, Zucker. you're right. We saw Monty Zucker, he was yeah. terrific. Oh, he was awesome. And this was Matt's official shot. This is before Peter Hurley came in and swept all my, my juice. Um, this was Matt's <laughs> official shot for me. So look at the symmetry of the way he's holding the camera. You liquefied my arm good on that too. I did not like liquefy. I, have a I, muscle. Did, I did not liquefy. Matt thought I liquefied his arm, <laughs> but uh, I did not. That's that's how it looked here. So this is uh, us on, at the keynote of Photoshop World. You know, each year we have a theme, and one year we did the, uh, the histograms. And Matt has always said this. He said. I don't care what you do as long as I don't have to dance. I'll dress up in funny outfits, <laughs> I'll sing, I don't ever. And so we had to do dance steps and we hired a choreographer and everything to do this whole Motown type of thing. But of course we switched all the words to Photoshop, you know, so it'd be funny. And as we're walking on stage, Matt looks back at me and says, I can't believe you. I have to do this. And there he, might have been a couple other words in there. There were probably but. some other words, but <laughs> anyway, he did a great job in it. And this is a shot I took in Matt, uh, Matt when we were out in uh, Los Angeles. That's the Griffith. Just, that's the Griffith uh, Observatory in, in LA. And this is Matt and I out shooting. We're shooting, I think, uh, were we shooting super bikes or was it Indy cars? Yeah. Indy race? I am monopodless. And this was a show that Matt and I did called D-Town TV, which was, uh, let me see if I can zoom a little bit here. So this was uh, uh, D-Town TV. And uh, we were, it was all about Nikon gear. So the first year we did it, it was a Nikon only show, which is why it was, oh, it's not showing up there. Um, but uh, that was a really fun show, really, really well received. And then after that, we started the grid. So when that show was done with its run, we started the grid. And this is Matt and I shooting uh, at a football game on the sidelines. I think it was a uh, USF. It's the only football games I've ever shot, I think. All right, so, so. And this was one, uh, I, I was teaching a workshop and I needed a male model. <laughs> Matt came in and, uh, and let me get that shot of him. Uh, this is Matt uh, getting his black belt and he, he has a red and black belt on, but that was the night he tested for his black belt. And the whole crew went and watched him and it was a lot of fun. This is Matt uh, pooping, basically. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> this, is, this is out uh, in uh, Monterey. That's a big sir. Yeah. yeah, and there's there's Matt uh, thinking, is that wave going to hit me? No, that wave's not going to reach me. <laughs> and uh, this is Matt uh, on the on the far right there, um, uh, during the blind critiques that we did. A, we produced a conference called the Google Plus Conference, and uh, that was some shots of Matt. Uh, there's uh, some shots of we did this thing uh, called the Meetup at Photoshop World, where everybody kind of gets together and just hangs out at the Eye Candy Bar in Vegas. Look at Pete. And <laughs> they did it based on that movie um, Hangover. Hangover. And this is uh, Matt uh, at one of the keynotes at Photoshop World when our theme was a political theme. And uh, in Photoshop, we trust there. And there's us uh, winning the, uh, the nomination. Yeah, yeah, it was rigged. It was totally rigged. It was, there's no, no doubt about it. This is Matt. I call this Matt with random people. <laughs> That's so, my TV <laughs> debut. That was your, this is that like your. My, that was on my. Uh, that was, was the Hallmark my, Channel? The Home and Family Show on, uh, yeah. And so. Uh, yeah, that was my TV debut. Matt's TV debut. And this is Matt and I shooting another USF game because you can see the USF colors behind us. There we are. I had to stop shooting USF games because I watched the game more than I shot it. Yeah, that's Because I went to USF. That was the problem. No, it's a problem when you, shoot, when you shoot a team you care about, you start yelling. Oh, this, hey, it's a pirate. So our theme this year at Photoshop World was pirate. We actually rented a, a pirate ship and went out to sea and uh, filmed it all out there, and it was, it was quite a fiasco. No, it was fun, it was really, it was fun, but Matt made a really great pirate. Brad, <coughs> Brad made such a good pirate. But uh, here's us, there's us on the grid, just posing and doing the stupid stuff that we do here on the grid. Oh, I'll put some makeup on that. And well, I don't know what I'm doing, it's me. All right, this is Matt with Peter Hurley's hair. So if you took Matt and you gave him Peter Hurley's hair, he would look very much like this. Yeah, you know what, I might do that. I think it's worth, oh look at it, it looks, it's flowing. But you know what, if you could get a little more volume in your curl, I think. Oh dude, I'll kill his volume. Make a difference. So this is, we used to actually do an episode of Photoshop User TV, broadcast it live from the show floor at Photoshop World. Do you know why we had to stop doing it? People screamed and yelled so much because we were giving out stuff and having fun and going crazy that everybody left all the other booths and all the vendors were like, what happened? We had all these people in front of us and they all like ran. And so we had to stop doing it on the show floor. This is our second set for Photoshop User TV. 
So after we filmed that awful episode, we just took the same desk. <laughs> we borrowed a big screen TV, and it's on a stand behind us. And uh, that, we that's... thought, let's go in a better background, and that'll make it better. Well, it actually was tremendously better, except oh, yeah. for it, it was kind of disruptive for everybody else because we had to turn off the air conditioning, and it took a long the phone time. Phone system. And you know how like we tape everything live now. Back then, it was extremely not live. If we made a horrid mistake, we stopped. Now, as you can see, Peter, we make horrid mistakes and we just keep going. <laughs> and this was our second set. This is where we're moving up big time, where we moved up to this set uh, for Photoshop User TV. And you can see just all the things that we've done over the years. Here's another shot of the set. Dave always wearing one of his Canada things. Then we went to another set. And so apparently, back then, we had a budget for sets. <laughs> 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 and then here we are on the, the current set of Photoshop User TV. Anyway, I, I, the music can fade down now. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Matt's been here since 2006, right? Uh, 2004. 2004. Well, I looked at the Ten meta, years. I looked at the metadata for that photo, and I thought it was 2006. But I, I wait. Yeah. Ten years next month. Oh, Okay. All right, 10 years next month. Anyway, um, we didn't want to just throw you out of here without at least take, taking, <laughs> well, thank taking a look back and, uh, and uh, you know, just reminiscing on all the things that we've done. We've come, come a long way from the standing in my office with, with one cue. Now <laughs> or got, sitting in Dave's office yeah, with now, a, a, a microphone. Absolutely. But uh, anyway, we wish you the very, very best. Thanks, and, But before we, we say goodbye, I do want to thank Peter. Thank you for being on the show. Oh, you were a for wonder, me. wonderful guest, as always. And uh, I learned a lot today. I really did. I, I, I love your answers. They're, they make so much sense. And we got a new class out of this today. We did. So we great. definitely did. That's Where awesome. Where can people go learn more about you? PeterHurley.com. PeterHurley.com. All right. Well, before we say goodbye to Matt, I know that there's a lot of people here on the set today that want to come and wish him his very best. So we're going to take you out with uh, thanking Matt for, uh, for his many years here and everything that he did. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, crap. A whole lot of people there. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hugs, hugs, group hug. <laughs> <laughs>